wind out of the Gobi Desert has pushed sand and silt into the Yellow River region, a thousand kilometers south of Beijing in the province of Shaanxi. Thousands of years have transformed these sediments into a compact form of soil called loess, and the Yellow River owes its name to the color of this earth. 40 million Chinese still live in these cave houses, or Yaodong, dug out of the high plateau. And out of this multitude, three lives, three destinies, three dreams. The cave master has a dream, to build one final Yaodong for his son, to whom he has passed on his tradition. Jing Lin, the miner, has a dream, to own a modern house with a roof in his distant native village. And to pay for his dream, he digs and digs into the lowest. His life is a constant struggle with the cliff. Yu Tsai had two dreams, to be elected mayor of the five villages in the valley, despite the fact that he is a member of the Muslim minority. That dream has been realized. The other is to marry off his favorite niece to a well-to-do young Muslim in the village. Zhu, the cave master, not only digs cave houses, he must also guarantee their solidity. He is the heir to this art, which has been passed down from father to son for 3,000 years. Chen, his son, has been trained by his father, but he has not yet reached the stage of master. Chen wants to dig a new Yaodong to live in with his wife and children. There's not enough space in the family cave where his father, his mother, and his two older brothers live. Chen needs his father's help to dig his new home. Master Zhu has spent his life building Yaodong. And at 76 years old, he is anxious to confirm Chen as his successor. Building the Yaodong is a family affair. Everyone usually participates. Although his two brothers are more valuable in the fields, they nevertheless respect the ancestral custom, the family meeting. Zhu and his family are Taoists. For them, it is unthinkable to undertake anything without first consulting the diviner. The diviner is the master of sites and dates. He determines the best location for building houses and burial sites, and the best times for weddings and feasts. He also sculpts stelles. The diviner connects the future Yaodong to the universe so that it will be in harmony with nature. He has inscribed the four cardinal points in the center of the courtyard on the ground. The center of the courtyard symbolizes the center of the universe.
With the help of his divining compass, the diviner questions the Earth's breath, since a sight is favorable or unfavorable, in harmony or not with the yin and the yang, the two cosmic principles which guide the lives of all Chinese. After having linked the center of the future Yaodong to his compass, the diviner interprets the trigram corresponding to the selected spot for building. The vibrations which cross heaven and earth on this site are favorable. Master Zhu and his family can dig without disturbance from the earth's breath. The dream takes shape. With his hands, the father sketches the cave in space, and his son draws it with his pick in the earth, the lowest. <laughs> Master Zhu is building his 888th Yaodong, 888, a lucky number. He is happy knowing that this one is for his own son. Thanks to new free market rules begun in the 1980s, Chinese peasants have become wealthier. Chen was the first in his village to transform his wheat fields into more profitable apple orchards. Master Zhu and his son now tackle the most sensitive part of the construction, setting the lowest bricks in place, thus guaranteeing the solidity of the structure. For the father, no two constructions are the same. He can read the nature of the lois, its cracks and its folds. With lowest bricks and lowest mortar, this Yaodong blends into the lois, and thanks to Master Zhu's know-how, it will last for centuries. Mm. <laughs> Since 1973, couples living in cities can only have one child, those in the country, two. Chen and his wife had twin girls. However, they wanted a son, and so they preferred to pay a fine, try again, and were lucky enough to have a boy. Every day, the grandmother steam cooks the little wheat breads, the staple in this region, the equivalent of a bowl of rice in southern China. Young in spirit and enthusiasm, but with the aches and pains of an old man, Zhu is so buried in his work, he has forgotten his age. 
。哎，我这孩子，我腰疼，我腰都疼的很。要上药叫医生看看去。嗯，去哪找？他叫医生给你看看去。嗯，今两天就该好的了。嗯，看医生。哦，我去。<咳>千 has hired his neighbors. He is the boss, and he pays them like any other workers. In the past, villagers helped each other and practiced bartering. Today, they prefer money in order to buy consumer products in the city. A Yao Dong is four meters wide and six to ten meters deep. The important aspects of family life take place on the communal bed, the Kang. More than just a bed, it is the symbol of conviviality. The Kang is our mother, the peasants say. It is made of lowest brick heated in winter by a coal stove. The entire family sleeps side by side. School begins at seven o'clock, and the children leave before breakfast. They have two eating breaks during the day and don't finish school until six p.m. School has been compulsory only since 1985. The country has 150 million primary school children, and they all begin the week with a flag raising ceremony. It wasn't very long ago that all schools in the region were caves. As they were too dark, the government outlawed them and replaced them with buildings. Pei Pei is faster with the abacus than her sister Hui Hui. She even claims to be faster than the calculator of her uncle Wu, who lives in the city. A.M. Breakfast time. Like all the villagers, Master Zhu, Chen, and the workers take a break. Once dug, the cave must dry for a few months. It will be a year before Chen and his family settle into their new yao dong. <laughs> This man, who made a fortune exporting apples, has already made use of Chen's services. Now he wants to enlarge his house, and he would like to rehire Chen and his team. Chen is embarrassed and has waited until evening to announce the news to his father. 
this new worksite cannot wait and he will have to stop the building of his Yaodong. Master Zhu did not sleep well. He realizes that fewer and fewer Yaodong are being built and the tradition is fading. Soon his son will build only houses. He goes to talk to his old friend Wang, at whose home we see the local party boss, a young man of the new generation. <laughs> Chen will finish his Yaodong before the bad weather comes, and it will be warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and ten times cheaper than the concrete houses which party leaders dream of living in. Will it be the last Yaodong in the village, or will there be others? That is another story. <laughs>